The recon arty loop has been an issue for a long time in Hell Let Loose. It's brought up often on the different socials, and while some solutions have been proposed, rarely are any details given for the community to discuss. Well, stick around because that's exactly what we're gonna do in this one. video. What do you say his name was? Gabatron. Hello everyone, I am Gabatron. What do we mean when we say the recon arty loop? We mean the relationship between the two and how it leads to a way of playing the game that just isn't very fun. Artillery will rain down and the only way to get it to stop is to eliminate the player or players that are operating it. So you send a recon team to deal with it, but then they just end up sitting there in the enemy HQ, camping the arty and anyone else that spawns in. You do this until you feel the enemy has given up, then you leave, only for Artie to begin firing again a minute later, forcing you to turn around and have to do it all over again. It's not much fun for the other side either. You get spawn killed a few times until you either lose the will to play Artie, or you spawn at a different HQ and hunt the recon team down, but even if you eliminate both the recon team and their OP, you still aren't buying yourself more than a couple minutes before the same thing is happening again. One of the most popular solutions, or at least the solution I see proposed most often, is to allow the recon team the ability to destroy or damage the artillery either with a satchel or other means, rendering it unusable until it's repaired or for a certain amount of time. I think this is a poor solution because it doesn't change the loop in any meaningful way. Recon would go back and destroy the arty, but now instead of camping the operators, they'll be camping the engineers or whoever that are trying to repair. It. Same loop. Let's say it's a five minute cooldown instead. Now recon squads are setting five minute alarms to do it all over again and no one is going to want to dedicate a squad just to protect Artie all game while there is a dead space of five minutes where you couldn't play as Artie even if you wanted to. And I'm not even going into why giving recon squad satchel charges is a bad idea. Now listen, no matter what changes we make, we will still have a loop of some sort and that's important to recognize so we can temper our expectations. Whether we are building our own arty or deploying mortars or moving a self-propelled gun, the enemy will still be coming after us and eventually people will get really good at it. But let's move on. So what's the most problematic part of this loop? The predictability of it. Arty is in the same spot all of the time on every map. One possible solution would be to make the arty guns buildable the same way AT guns are. A nice simple solution, but it's not my favorite, nor is it very exciting from a marketing standpoint, as there's no new content to hype up. First is that arty currently has a range limit and is not allowed to fire into the enemy HQ. This helps with spawn camping and helps teams push back have more of a chance to recover as they are already facing other challenges at that point. I think this limit of not firing into the enemy HQ would have to stay in place even if you could build your own arty. The second issue I have is simply a historic immersion one. Arty in World War II typically didn't work that way, right? I mean, Arty operated in batteries, not in individual guns placed randomly across a battlefield. I know there are plenty of other things in Hell Let Loose that operate differently than they did historically, but I think this would be less than ideal for most players when other solutions are on the table. Perhaps we could consider smaller field guns that were used during this period, uh, but let us know what you think down in the comments. Do we have an example of a more mobile form of fire support that would fit well in Hell Let Loose? Yes, mortars and self-propelled guns. Mortars and SPGs have been requested for a long time in Hell Let Loose, and they've even been on long-forgotten roadmaps. Either of these elements would introduce mobility to the indirect fire support available in Hell Let Loose and help reduce the predictability of the loop. But they come with their own set of concerns. How many? How should they be organized? Do they fit into the resource metagame or do they have their own ammo independent of resources? Would they be buildable and require supplies? Or would you deploy them like a weapon with a bipod? What's the range of the weapons? Explosive charge, damage radius, and so on. So here's where I'm going to stop burying the lead and just tell you what I think should happen, although I'll admit I don't have all the answers figured out, so you'll have to put your feedback down in the comments. I'll be sad to see it go, but I think artillery should be removed from the game in its current state. Perhaps an artillery barrage could be made into a commander order in some way, uh, as Artie was a part of World War II, and it can be pretty awesome to see Artie do its work in Hell Let Loose. But moving on, each team could get two mortar squads of two players each, similar to how recon squads currently work. 
This is bending some historical aspects as a platoon or section, which is more or less how Let Loose's unit structure, would usually have three mortar teams each with at least three people in them. But I think two squads with two people each would just work best for the game. This way you are only taking eight players away from the front line uh, versus 12 or more. Again, similar to the recon squad, you'd have an officer and then the specialist with the officer able to do all the things that regular infantry officers could do like build spawns, leave marks, and communicate via command chat. The specialist would be responsible for the weapon itself. But now we have the questions of how do we place the mortars, as in, will we build them like an AT gun or will we carry them like a bazooka? Will they use resources or carry their own ammo? Okay, let's start with the scenario where the specialist carries the mortar like a secondary weapon, like a bazooka. Let's call this scenario A. In this scenario, I think it makes sense for the mortar to carry its own ammo versus using resources, perhaps 25 or 30 HE shells with an additional 5 smoke shells. They could rearm by using an ammo box from a jeep, which would make really good vehicles for these teams, uh, buy ammo airdrops from the commander, or maybe buy an explosives ammo box one of them could carry after unlocking an additional loadout. This scenario A has a couple issues though. Since we are taking Artie away and not replacing its drain on the munitions resource, we could end up with unbalance with resources. Second is the issue of only being able to rearm once per life from an ammo box or not even needing them, as the specialist could just redeploy over and over to get more ammo. I'd like to avoid that if possible. If this is the route we go, then perhaps we could change it so mortar players don't get more mortar ammo, uh, it's hard to say, <laughs> upon respawning. We could offset this limitation by allowing them more than one resupply from an ammo box per life. After all, if you are surrounded by ammo boxes and the enemy doesn't respond, then why shouldn't you be able to fire for extended periods of time? Let's move on to what we'll call scenario B where mortars are built like AT guns by using supplies. If this is the route we go, then I think mortars should use the munitions resource to fire just like how Artie does currently. It would require more coordination to place your mortar this way, but ammo would be more of a, the commander's responsibility than yours per se. You could fire continuously from one spot, either until the enemy responded, or your team ran out of munitions. This scenario would also not require any changes to how resources work. I think this scenario would fit into how Hell Let Loose currently works better than scenario A, but I'm left a little worried about supplies. If a mortar squad needs supplies to build their mortar, then I think they should be able to carry their own supply box. After all, you may have a bad commander or no CO at all, and we all know that coming across supplies can be difficult sometimes, uh, let alone supplies in spots where you want them. Relying on other frontline squads and their support players to drop supplies for you could be a daunting task with less than ideal results. Air supply drops will give your positions away long before you start firing, and using a supply truck will likely mean that one of you will be making near constant supply runs. I don't think this is ideal, so give the mortar squad leader a box of supplies so the specialist can build the mortar where and when they want. However, I think if you give the squad leader the normal size box of 50 supplies, then you run the risk of having these guys just turn into garrison squads. So I propose that the mortar only take 25 supplies to build and the squad leader's box be only 25 supplies so they can't build garrisons without acquiring supplies through different means or by coordinating with the other mortar squad leader. Other than the smaller size, the box would function identically to that of the support rolls box. Perhaps this would get players more interested in placing their manpower nodes further forward. Remember to add to the discussion in the comments as I'm sending this video directly to the devs and they'll want to read your feedback on these ideas. We could also just do it the same way that Squad 44 handles it. In Squad 44, you build a mortar emplacement by using supplies, but there are no resources in that game, so you have to acquire more ammo once you run out. Kind of a blend of Scenario A and B. The only reason I don't think Hell Let Loose should do it that way is simply to avoid copying a mechanic from a similar game. But I definitely don't think it's a bad solution in any way. Let's move on to placement rules and range. I think you should be able to build these anywhere in friendly territory and unlocked enemy territory except the enemy HQ area even if it's unlocked.
you should not be able to place them in neutral territory or locked enemy territory. Let's talk range. You'd still have to somehow restrict the mortar's ability to fire into the enemy HQ, or else you'd just get them spawn camping at a certain point in the match. I don't think mortars or SPGs would work at all if you can fire them in each other's HQs, so figuring that out would be a top priority. Okay, from the exact center of Carantan, here is what it would look like with a 200 meter range. I think this is just too short. Here is 400 meters, and I think this is still too short, as if you were to set up in town center, you wouldn't even be able to reach rail crossing. Here is 600 meters, and at first glance, this is starting to look way too big, right? Well, hold that thought. Here is 800 meters, and it looks crazy huge. Well, let's look at it from a different perspective and move back off of map center. See, from here we can't reach town center with a 600 meter range. So if we control ruins and we are supporting an attack on town center, we will have to move up close enough where we will likely be in range of regular enemy infantry. Seems more reasonable than what the yellow circle makes it look like, right? If canal crossing is our target instead of town center, then that puts us in a spot where we will definitely run into infantry. Let's change our range to 800 meters. Uh, here we'd be able to hit all three strong points in the middle sector from our own HQ area. This would make the game more interesting for recon, but does seem a little long to me. So let's see what 700 meters looks like. This forces us to stay in our defensive sector, but buys us a little more space at the rear of it. So I don't know what you all think, but I think the max range of mortars should be somewhere between 600 and 800 meters, with 700 meters uh, what I would call the sweet spot. Now, historically, ranges of mortars vary depending on which system was being used, the extremes being 500 meters on the short end and about 3,000 meters on the long end, with a few around the 1,000 meter mark. So while not perfectly historically accurate, we wouldn't be so far off at 700 meters or so. Minimum range should be, you know, 100 meters or maybe 150 meters to allow really close coordination with another squad if players want it. While I think it would be neat uh, if the length of time it took your shells to hit the ground varied depending on angle, it would probably be easiest if they just kept it the same as how Artie currently works with just a straight 24 seconds to impact from the time they are fired. This would make coordinating with infantry easier. Uh, bonus, if the different factions had slightly different sounds and visual effects for their unique mortar weapons. I don't have any solid ideas in terms of damage radius or dispersion, as I think those are things that would have to be tested for balance. I guess dispersion would probably be larger than the current 2 to 20 meters of arty. You know, at least 25 or 30 meters. Uh, but I think it, this would also depend on the rate of fire to degree. And explosions should be smaller, obviously, than current arty. I suppose this also depends on which specific mortars were used to a degree. Uh, perhaps our mortars could be upgraded, similar to how bunkers and barricades work. Uh, first tier is a light mortar at maybe 25 supplies. Second tier is medium mortar at 150 supplies or so. With third tier being a heavy mortar at 325 supplies or something like that. Damage increasing at each tier while keeping range the same. Maybe an increase in munitions cost with uh, the larger mortars. Put your thoughts down below. Loadouts. Squad leader starts with standard SMG and a smoke with unlocks that follow a similar progression to the regular infantry squad leader. Except they should probably get mines at some point to help defend their mortar emplacement. And of course, uh, the small supply box if we are building our mortars. The specialists would get their faction standard rifle and progress from there. Both roles should have more limited ammo counts than regular infantry and be geared more heavily towards defense than offense with maybe a high level unlock uh, with a more aggressive loadout so they can better participate in assaults if and when that time comes. Make sure to let us know what you think in the comments. I also think that only members of the mortar squad should be allowed to operate the mortar. I'd also like there to be a mechanic of some sort that requires both squad members to work together, such as the mortar having two seats, uh, the firing seat that only the specialist can occupy, and the second seat which aims the weapon that only the officer can occupy, with there perhaps being a rate of fire bonus uh, for having both seats occupied at the same time. My concern here would be 
that without a mechanic like this, the officer would just lay down their supplies, then redeploy wherever to do whatever, leaving the specialists to fend for themselves. It would just lead to a teleporting mortar squad, and I don't think that's what we want. The mechanics I proposed a moment ago here uh, could help alleviate that issue while still allowing the squad leader the ability to exit the mortar if, uh, you know, it doesn't need any further adjustments. Now let's talk about that self-propelled gun. First is that only armor crews should be able to use it. It should spawn in via commander orders versus being an auto-spawn vehicle, and you should only be allowed one on the field at any one time. Now initially when I was writing this all down, I thought it would be best if these vehicles cost a lot of fuel and had long respawn times, like more than the heavy tanks. But the more I thought about it, the less sure I was. These SPGs will likely be slow, at least when it comes to acceleration, and extremely vulnerable. And not only to enemy armor and anti-tank weapons, but infantry too as SPGs like the Vespa, Hummel, and M7 Priest were open topped. So once these vehicles are found, they won't last long. Long story short, I'm not sure making them too costly and too rare will be good for the game, yet I also don't think they should be so cheap that they end up being used foolishly, so I'm really not sure where these should be in terms of cost. Maybe just on par with heavies? I don't know, let us know what you think. Speaking of open top vehicles, these SPGs and mortar teams may make the strafing run a little more useful and rewarding to use. I believe SPGs should still have three seats, a driver, a gunner slash loader, and the commander. Switching seats should take a while, at least uh, from the driver position to any other. The gunner seat would also load with a small bonus to rate of fire if the vehicle is fully crewed. These SPGs should have the range to fire anywhere on the map except the enemy HQ area, and they should be able to drive anywhere on the map. I don't know, maybe except the enemy HQ. So while mortars would not be able to enter locked enemy territory, SPGs would. I think it would work best if SPGs kept the Artie's current 24 second shell flight time, aiming system, and used munitions for ammo. But speaking of resource balancing, I do see a potential problem here with my proposals. As it is now, most matches will only have one or two Artie guns firing at any one time. If we went ahead with uh, what's proposed here, we would likely see all three of these munition draining weapons Happens, uh, more often, which could lead to resource balance issues. It's a concern I have anyway. So perhaps with two mortar squads firing, maybe the SPG should just get its own ammo like how armor currently works. Or if we were able to upgrade mortars and they use more munitions the more they are upgraded, then I think the SPG should just have its own ammo. The last thing I would say here is that mortar squads and the SPG should not be introduced to the game at the same time. I think balancing one out at a time would be easier to manage, and additionally you would get two marketing cycles out of it instead of just one. Now let's get back to the loop. Like I said earlier, we will always have a loop. Recon is still going to be hunting these mortars and SPGs down, and there will be plenty of times you'll be in a nice spot and fire off a round or two just to get shot in the face and have to start all over again. It's still going to get frustrating at times. The difference between the way Artie works now versus what we propose here is simply that players have agency over where this all occurs. These changes would also introduce skill and tactics into this aspect of the game. I get excited thinking about having my driver move our SPG to the move mark, all while letting the gunner know he needs to set his gun to fire at 500 meters while we move, so we're ready to fire immediately when we get there. Two smokes and eight HE for Able Squad before repositioning 200 meters to the south to keep the enemy guessing. I think moving my mortar squad from one place to another while keeping an eye on our OP to let us know when it's time to defend ourselves sounds fun and engaging. Deciding whether to abandon an emplacement or to build it up. My guess is that players would be more inclined to fire in short barrages versus just firing continuously from a fixed spot, and I think that would be a good thing as it could lead to tighter coordination between squads. You have to remember that in the early days of Hell Let Loose, there weren't as many resources being gained, nor near as many commander orders. For a short time, that is exactly how Artie was used in Hell Let Loose versus how it is used now, you know, shorter barrages versus continuous firing. I also think that Recon and Mortar Squads both will be more inclined to use vehicles like the Jeep. 
This coupled with the addition of the SPG means I think we need to revisit how the vehicle limit works. We'd either have to increase the vehicle limit as a whole or adjust the auto spawn roster to allow for an extra commander spawn or two. Personally, I think all vehicles should be commander spawns after the warm up period, but we won't get into that here. Anyway, whether you agree with these proposals or not, I hope you at the very least come away from this video uh, understanding that introducing mortars or whatever isn't just as simple as getting rid of Artie and plopping in a mortar squad. Many things have to be considered. Everything from squad composition to vehicle limit to you name it has to be considered. And I'm not even taking into account how much work this will all be versus how much it would benefit the game from a business point of view. Perhaps the reason we haven't gotten mortar squads added is because both Black Matter and Team 17 have looked into it and found it to be a waste of resources. I really hope that's not the case, uh, and hopefully this video coupled with your feedback can help get the ball rolling by finally letting the devs know more of what we're looking for other than just saying, already bad, mortar's good, and hoping we get drastic changes from incomplete feedback. I think that's it for this one. Uh, I know I keep saying it, but put your feedback down in the comments. What I proposed here is just what I would like to see and I think is reasonable with knowing how Hell Let Loose currently works, but it's by no means the only idea out there. Maybe having one of each, a mortar squad, an SPG, and one arty gun still in the HQ is the answer. Maybe you like it the way it is. I don't know, but I do think it's time for a change, and I think allowing us players to determine for ourselves where our fire support comes from is necessary for that change, no matter what form it comes in. Okay, I hope you like what you heard, or at least got some fresh perspective, and if you did, go ahead and subscribe and pull the trigger on that like button. Plenty of ways to support what I do here in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.